Hey there, and welcome to another episode of Keeping It Real Kitchen. This is your boy, Majestic Gent, and... Tomato! And we're here making squash casserole. Step one, wash your squash. You don't want any nasty, dirty squash casserole, so you gotta make sure it's nice and clean. And what we have here is yellow squash. That's what you wanna use for your squash casserole. Oh, and furthermore, we want to give a big shout out to our 200 plus subscribers. When we first started this, we did it for fun. <laughs> we hit tomato back there. We did it for fun. We didn't even know anyone would watch any of the videos. But it seems like the Bean Pop video is doing way better than we ever would have anticipated. So we want to say thank you to our current subscribers and hopefully thank you, you. you'll click the subscribe and like button if you do. If not, then you know give us constructive criticism and we'll take it and we'll you know keep it in mind. Uh, yeah, uh, it's it's humbling to say to say the least. So we really appreciate it. I mean honestly that you take the time out of your busy day or night and watch these videos so we'll keep bringing them we you know we have a request for some, a banana pudding video that's going to be coming hopefully I'll have the link to that soon in here and um, enjoy the squash casserole we're going to bring to you oh hey y'all um, so squash casserole right you need yellow squash pick them you know where they look nice you washed them already and what you want is a nice sharpened knife right um, check out our knife sharpening video all right so you oh, wanna... you're kind of reckless with that knife aren't you oh ooh. <laughs> <laughs> just playing. I'm just messing first. with I mean, we mess with each other like this all the time don't take don't take a, you know this is what we do so cut off the tip there see how see how that happened just on the the tip that that didn't sound right, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then you you just cut it, just boom, boom, Ooh. boom, and that's what happens when you have a sharp knife. Yep. Boom, so you're struggling. Boom. Aren't you supposed to cut with the back part of the knife though? The back part of the knife. That's what I thought. But hey, you know, keep oh, it real. Oh, you mean down here, yeah, like? Yeah, and then you like pivot eh, the knife. I'm We're good. not professionals. We just cut how we know how. You see, they're probably about a half inch. I'm going to put up a, a crumb for the uh, knife sharpening video so you'll be able to click that and see that video. It's pretty good. Music by me on there. Check it out, please. Majestic jet, jet, jet. So, yeah, you want to cut it, quarter it. Yeah. And then throw it in a casserole dish. Well, yeah. Just I'm throw just, it in something. Yeah, I'm just putting it in there to hold it, put it to yeah. the side see, until it's ready. We don't rehearse any of this. The, the squash is in the water. <laughs> Nah, don't do yourself like you did in that salmon video. <laughs> right. There's gonna be a link to the salmon video on this. Y'all gotta check that one out, man. Whew. She was okay though. Yeah, I'm but good. But she burned herself on that. See, you learned a valuable, yes, right like a valuable lesson when, when you're dealing with hot grease. Yeah, that's serious business. That's serious business. You don't want to mess around and scald yourself because it will get on your skin and continue to cook. Yeah, that's serious business. All right. So yeah. So what are we doing now, tomato? Um, boiling the squash. You can also steam it, you know, but I'm boiling it today. And a little bit of water, so it's essentially going to steam because I'm, um, I'm putting the top on there. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, yeah. And, uh, again, I'm not going to season this either because... You know, I like to not cook. I, I don't like to add unnecessary ingredients. And tomato gets requested to make this squash casserole. Every All right, so the squash are finished. And now you strain them out. So you want your squash to look kind of like this when you finish. You take the spoon and you can squish it really easily. They smell good. Can I eat They're more? delicious. Okay, you can squish it pretty easily. But it's going to cook some more in the oven. With the yeah. cheese and everything. Oh, wait till you see the secret. You want to use unsalted butter. Eight tablespoons. And I'm going to put another one in there. And you just melt it down. Now that's a lot of real butter. Real slow. Oh, man. Didn't you just say you was cooking healthy? Yeah, no, 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 no. I didn't say I was cooking healthy. Okay. I said I don't want to put unnecessary 
salts and fats and things. Now repeat to the people, why do we use unsalted butter again? Because it's extra salt. Exactly. And it'll be salty. Too and if salty. You, and if you bake it, we'll throw your recipes Completely. all the way off. I'm going to put my cooked squash into this bowl so that I can get it seasoned. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're cutting the onions for the squash casserole. These are white onions. What you want to do is you want to cut them at the top, cut them at the bottom, and peel them exactly how tomato was doing. This and is how we, I do it. You can do it how you do it. Yep. So now, now the onions are in there, and we want to puree them. The onions have been pureed. So what you want is a nice juicy onion. Oh yeah, baby. That's what you want, just like that. Perfect, perfect. And if you don't have a, a food processor, good luck. <laughs> but if you do, this is what you want. All right, so I'm getting this butter and I'm pouring it over into the squash. The squash has not been seasoned as of yet. Um. I need to get the seasonings. They're over here. Let so the people know what the seasonings are. They are the regular table salt. Yes. A little onion powder. Yes. Certainly some black pepper. Always. That's really all you you need. Uh, but I'm going to throw in, you know how I do. I got to throw in a little paprika, right? <laughs> Garlic powder too. So I just sprinkled it. So what I'm doing here is I do a little bit at a time. I do a little squash at a time, right? And I layer it. Um, so the salt. If you had to guesstimate some um, measurements, what would they be? Uh, season to taste. Yeah, season to taste, man. That's what it's all about. It's about what you think tastes good. That's it. That's yeah. all it's about. We don't have it any doesn't official matter. measurements. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much I put in here. And now what we're going to put in here um, is the onion. Oh, yeah. We're going to put the onion. This is the most important step. It's not the most important. It is. No. It is just as important as all of them because it works with them all. They all work together, yeah? Okay. They do. They all work together. All right. I'm putting black pepper in here. All right. So, like I said, I like to layer. I season that bit first, mm -hmm. and then I season this bit. What's next step? More onions. Same. But I just do it a bit at a time. So, this is the same steps. Repeat. 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 Stir it up. Make sure it's mixed really well. And taste it as you go. Taste as you go. Very important. Good advice, tomato. Very important to taste as you go because what you don't want is something that's too salty and what you don't want is something that's too bland. Right. You want it just right. So taste as you go. And taste always as remember that you're going to have the cheese and then that's what it's see. Wait yeah. till you see this. Taste as you go before you add the eggs. Yeah, because you don't want to taste eggs. That's raw. Mm, yeah. That's, mm, yeah. I mean, mm. yeah, it's no good. That will work. All right, again. Taste it. All right, so um, I just crack open a few eggs in there. Large eggs. Yeah, and and um, the whole thing. I don't. I mean, I guess you could just use egg white, but I used the whole egg. So now after you beat the eggs, you pour them into the squash casserole mix. You want to make sure the squash casserole mix is cool just a little bit because you don't want to cook the eggs. They'll scramble in there if the... Casserole mix isn't cooled off properly. 
add a little splash of milk. Usually you want to add that milk when it's a little too dry, but it's not dry at all uh, right now. So just add a little milk in there. Because, you know, when you put the cheese in, it's going to get a little drier. When you add this the is, cheese and you add the crackers. This is whole milk, by the way. Yeah, whole milk. Cracker barrel cheese. This is the secret. Extra sharp. Extra sharp. So we use the food processor to grate our cheese. After it's grated and ready to go. Get some little crackers. Ritz crackers. Ritz. I like these. That's what I use. Only for casseroles, though. We normally eat the townhouse. <laughs> okay. I take these, these Ritz crackers. And then? I crumble them in here. Just like that. You can crush them. I, sometimes I crush them in the, um, in the bag. Crush them up like that. Mm. Tomato strong. <laughs> Instant. See what I was talking about when I said the crackers will make it um, a little drier. Mm-hmm. All right, that's good. It's starting to come together. Take this cheese. Throw it in there. Her hands are clean, don't worry. Yeah, I stay washing my hands. Especially when I'm cooking. Cook when, when I'm cooking. Just a little bit more milk. Whole milk, by the way. It's talking to me. It's talking to me. Oh, <laughs> shucks now. Somebody, oh. somebody know what that's about. Oh. Somebody know what that's about. It's talking to me. It's talking to me. Okay, I have a, I have a cooking story. Would you like to hear it? Sure. Here it go. Here, I'm going to do it while I'm fixing this casserole. Okay. All right, so once upon a time, I was in the kitchen with my mom and grandma, right? I was at my mom's house, and it was time to make dinner. So dinner that night was going to be fried chicken right that was going to be the main course that was going to be the protein so what are we doing what's this step so this step is ritz crackers and we're going to line the bottom of the pan with ritz crackers okay 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 and the side of the pan too so i told you know i had made a few fried chicken dishes at that time you know and they were like, oh gosh, oh no, okay, fine. <laughs> you can make the fried chicken tomato. <laughs> so I said, okay, great. Came time to season the chicken. And I'm sitting there seasoning it, talking about, it's talking to me, it's talking to me. And my grandma said, no, 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 that's too much, that's too much salt. I said, no, no, Grandma, it's talking to me. It's talking to me. Next thing you know, oh, what happened? We sit down to eat it. My grandma and my mom, they had a mad, upset, and angry look on their face. Why? Because it was too salty, and my mom and grandma threw the chicken down onto the plate and said, it's too salty. Gotcha. <laughs> More careful, tomato. So, okay, so as you can see, I have lined this pan with Ritz crackers and the sides of it too. And it's going to be lined again. So let me take this. The mixture. The mixture, which probably needs a little bit. some more milk in it. It's, it's kind so of dip. So what's going to happen is, in the baking process, if it's this dense, it will dry out. Yeah. So what tomato is going to do is add more milk. Yes, tomato. I think it needs another couple of eggs, too. Eggs. So eggs, what they do in your casserole is keep it together, keep the consistency. You put too many eggs, you pretty much can well, I already put four eggs in there. Yeah. Four eggs is probably enough. And so now she's going to transfer the mixture 
to the pan that's lined with the rich crackers. Okay, so now you smooth it out and make a layer out of it. And then what do you do, tomato? Add more cheese! Right, because this is a cheesy casserole. It's a casserole. Casseroles have cheese, eggs, are always the base. Some people put mayonnaise. We're not doing that. Then? Another layer. If for those of you who have made the lasagna, you should be familiar with the process. Yeah. It's like that without the noodles. See? So what I do with that is now I put the crackers in there like this. Put them in, not on top. So now some more cheese. More cheese. Ladies and gentlemen, she's going to try to make another layer out of this. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> I like this. Tomato is being real bold and bold and beautiful. I hope I don't destroy my oven. Take a look, ladies and gentlemen. Just, just take a look at how the squash casserole comes together. Now cooking, when you get to a certain point, it's, a, it's an art of love. You don't really necessarily use measurements anymore, but I'm gonna try my best to get you the measurements so you can kind of follow along to a recipe. For those of you who are just starting out. Add another layer of crackers. Another layer of Ritz crackers. Ritz are for ca casseroles, and I'm gonna explain to you why. Ritz, see, look at the Ritz. It's very rigid. They're a little savory. It's very rigid. See the salt crystals on there? You see that? And that's what you want for your casserole. They, they stand up to pressure. Yeah. The townhouse yeah. will collapse under pressure. You want a Ritz. <laughs> when the ish hits the fan, you want a Ritz cracker in your pan. Oh, wow. So. Tell me about this step, tomato. How important is this step that you're doing right now? Put the uh, wrist crackers on the top. Not on this. Not only on the top. Why are these flat, but these are angled? It's Explain to the people who don't know. For those who don't know, I put them on the side here. It's, it's for decoration, really. But I like this a lot on in, on here and. It won't, I guess it won't help, it won't spill over or something. I don't know, what do you want me to say? Because <laughs> this, is, this is what it is. I want you to keep it real, tomato. I, I'm keeping it real. I put it on the side because, oh, sorry. Because mm -hmm. it's cute. Mm -hmm. So it this also keeps the juices from boiling out the pan. <laughs> because look how stuffed this is. It's, when you cook it, it's going to boil over. Yeah. But when you have these crackers it's lined. It's baby. Like this. This is an art of love, like you're cooking for family and loved ones. I mean, they'll understand. I mean, none of us are gourmet chefs. Some of us might be, and they might have things to say. But what do you do to keep your crackers from burning? Nothing. Okay. So, how, <laughs> what temperature are we going to cook this at? That's a good question. I'll put it on 350. 354. So it's cooked. In the, which rack? Mm, uh, the middle one? So, she sounds confused. We're going to cook it on the middle rack for 350 for probably about an hour. Just done, baby. An hour. How do you know when it's done, tomato? Um, I think I looked it up and see what casserole egg, eggs are supposed to cook to, the temperature. So, you use a meat thermometer? You can if you want to. So, you need to preheat your oven. Or you right? could do it like a cake and stick... A fork or uh, a butter knife. So or what you want to do to save some time is you want to preach your oven to 350. Preach your, preach. I said preheat your. Preach your oven to 350 degrees. Right, right. Can I get an amen? Wow. Preach your oven. How many degrees? Before you put your casserole this year. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> Thank you, Brother J Majestic Jit. Mother Majubba. <laughs>
Brother Madeba. <laughs> your brother. Brother Madeba. Your brother. What I like to do with this is put some aluminum foil over it when I initially put it in the oven so that it doesn't burn the crackers. And then I take it off after a while so that it can continue cooking and brown. Good. So we're going to check the temperature on this squash casserole. Eggs should be cooked to 160, 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna check it. All right, so it's nowhere near done. So what I'm gonna do is take it out and uncover it. It's been in there about 30 minutes. Approximately 30 minutes. Alright, All right, so. The squash casserole is done. Let's check to see if it's done. Again, you help put it in the center, and um, but not touching the bottom of the pan. And because it's an eggy casserole, you want to make sure it gets to at least 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Will it make it? Yeah, it's there. Alright. Alright. Squash casserole. Keeping it real kitchen. Uh, I'm just going to let that cool down. And then I'm going to wrap it. And uh, wrap the top up in some aluminum foil. And put it in the refrigerator. Um, you want to practice safe food handling. And um, that's it.